Hello everyone, my name is Azad Mardin. I'm the founder and the lead instructor at Node University. Welcome to Node University Short Lectures. In this series of episodes, we will be talking about some of the fundamentals of Node. And let's get started with the ES6 import, which is the ES6 or ES2015 feature. It's the import statement for the modules. And let's compare it with Node's its own module system, which is built around the require method. And then we will compare it with the ESNext import method, not the import statement. So let's start with the node require. Node require was early on, and this is the very first Node.js module system. The way it works, it it loads modules dynamically and then it caches them based on the URL or based on the name, should I say, not the URL, but the name uh, which includes the path to the particular module if it's a file to pass to that file. If it's a module, you can also use the organization and the path structure. So that module is cached so every time you are requiring the same module in the same application you will get it from the memory it's not going to run over and over so that's the benefit and of course being dynamic you can do interesting things such as you can basically programmatically require a different module so the name of the module does not have to be known ahead of the time this is a big 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 difference compared to the es6 import e import statement without the parentheses it's static meaning it has to know the name of the module ahead of the time with the require you don't need to know the name ahead of the time but import, you have to know it, and if you try to use a variable, import space variable name, it's not going to work, so it has to be a string, it has to be statically known ahead of the time and hard-coded in the project. You cannot set it programmatically. So that's my personal dislike for the import statement. Certain things you cannot do with the import statement. But it also gives you more power. If you use a static analysis tool, if you shake your dependency tree, uh, Webpack can do that. You can eliminate some dead dependencies and for front-end projects it's very, very important, it's very popular. For Node.js it's not that big of a deal because first of all we have module caching and second of all we don't care how much uh, memory, how much space the module takes on the server, right? Because space is cheap we don't care but on the front end we care because on the front end people our users they our clients they have to download all those packages we don't want to include too many of the packages so that's big 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 difference imports they're more important for the front end primarily they use in the front end angular typescript react webpacks they use their require for the mod for the node mo modules and node packages node projects we don't even we don't really need the import, uh, but of course you want to be consistent because you want to reuse the same components on the server. So you might want to switch to imports just to be consistent or use require on the front end as well. And the last few words about the import method. Import method. I'm super excited. It's coming soon to the ECMAScript standard. What it doing is dynamic so it's pretty much similar to the require and it will dynamically resolve the modules and it will be the standard which is good meaning we will be able to use it natively in the browsers right now the browsers starting to support import and the node version 10 it starts to support the import but the names has to be different you have to name it mjs instead of just js so that's it for this short podcast um, subscribe to the podcast on itunes or go to Nord university to get the full video experience and i'll see you in the next episode